talk about structure in Wing Chun. Now, everybody throws around the term structure, but I'm going to uh, explain how I define structure. Structure in Wing Chun is the ability to use your arms, your body, and your legs all as one unit every time you do any application of any motion at any time. So, the question is, how can you learn to do that? Well, learn to use your, your arms, your body, and legs in one is just like any other uh, sports example you want to talk about. And you want to throw a ball, well you can throw a ball with just using your arm, or you can throw a ball using your legs, your body, and arms, you'll have more power, you'll have more control when you throw that ball. Same thing when you do any Wing Chun application. You want to learn to use the whole body. So, that actually can be taught in the very first thing that you were probably taught when you were doing Wing Chun, and that is getting into the Yichi Kin and Ma stance. So I'm going to go over uh, some basics of what you want to be, try to become aware of when you're developing your Yichi Kin and Ma stance. So, I'm going to have Ed uh, do a side profile to Yichi Kin and Ma. <laughs> Correctly, please. Oh. Okay. Uh, actually, it's over from the beginning. Okay, so, <clears throat> when he's in just a standing here, before he gets, actually gets into the stance, you want to make sure you have good posture. And the reason for that is because the better posture you have, the more you'll let your muscles relax. The more you let your muscles relax, the more you'll be able to feel incoming force, and the more power you'll be able to release when you're applying a strike application. So, make sure you have good posture just from the very beginning. The next step, as he crosses his arms and rolls and pulls his arms back, this motion right here, <coughs> as you pull your arms back, is creating a little tension in your shoulders, and that tension is actually what's connecting the arms to the body. And we'll get further into that tension. <laughs> the next step that he's going to do is get into rolling his hips forward and bending his knees. Now, that rolling the hips forward is actually what's going to connect the legs to the body. And the bending of the knees is actually what's going to bring the, the body into the center of the foot. So, the next step that he completes is to open up and open up on the heel. Good. So, from here, you can see that he's got good posture and he's got the proper tension on his arms and the proper tension in his hips as well. Now, once you're in the mechanically correct position, the next part, the challenging part, is actually learn to let everything relax properly. And learning to relax everything properly actually comes from the core. Okay? Let me just be slow, sir. Learning to, learning to let everything relax actually comes from the center. And once you learn to let the center relax, then you can learn to let the abdomen relax. Learning to let the abdomen relax, then you'll be able to feel if the hips are tight and everything in between. Once the hips are relaxed, then you'll feel it down the line, the, the legs, into the thighs, the knees, the calves, the ankles, the feet, ultimately everything to be supported by the ground itself. That's the connection you're looking for, is that everything is mechanically in the correct position, and then you'll be able to have the correct musculature to be able to support that correct position. Now, a simple test that your Sifu can do to you to see if you're in the correct position is just simply touching on the guy's chest. <laughs> That's actually what you don't want to do is lunge towards the guy. When you're, <laughs> when, you're, uh, when, you're, when you're doing the stance, and if you see who's testing your stance, he's not testing the stance to see you know, how much force you can hold in that singular point. No, the test actually is just by touching the person right here, is to learn to let everything relax and let the force come into you so that you can feel the connection into the body, through the hips, into the knees, into the ankles, feet, and ultimately be supported by the ground. That's what you're testing for. Now, how can you do that with the arms too? Now like I said, this arm, the, your position right here is teaching the arms to have some tension on it. That tension you actually want to carry out if you were to go into the fighting position as well. Because that goes into the fighting position. Now, as you see who can test your stance, he can just push on the stance right here and it should be the same thing. He pushes on the stance and this isn't to see how much you know, force that you can take. This isn't to be like, okay, here comes the bull, the bull's going to bounce off me. This is again, just to make you aware of the connection as I, as I push on his triangle, to feel the connection into his arm, into the body, ultimately running through the legs to be supported by the ground. That's what each Kiyomana is trying to teach you, is to feel that connection, that correct awareness of the alignment of the body with the correct balance of the musculature to support that position. So, <clears throat> in a nutshell, everything that you could possibly want to learn from uh, Wing Chun structure is held within the each Kiyomana stance. So, you know, some people say, 
that a good stance is one that could support, you know, if somebody's pulling on your legs across. And some people say that, you know, you could uh, develop a stance that if somebody's pushing on your hip, that you should be able to push it away from you. But that's just muscling the force. I say a good Wing Chun stance is one that allows you to feel the connection of the arm provided and the legs onto the ground while being completely mobile. It's the way Sifu did it, it's the way America does it, and it's worked out pretty good so far. So for your consideration, I give you the best thing you could ever learn in Wing Chun, and that's the basic Ichiyama stance. So, let's go over just a couple differences. I'm going to do a couple applications, and you can tell me which you think is uh, the better use of structure. So, I'm going to have Ed come in. He's going to do a um, simple pot punch on it. Come in, pot punch. Okay, that's, that's uh, example A, we'll say. Now we'll go with example B, and he can come in and lock punch. Okay, so think about it for a second. There's no one this weekend? Yeah, of course. Of course. Alright, so if you thought about it and paused it, the better example was example A, the use of better body structure. And the reason for that is he came in and did the clock punch. He came back here and slid forward, just jumps out, came forward here, use of the whole body moving. You never want to just use the arms. And you want to just use the body. I come in here, the whole body is adjusting, the arm is moving forward at the same time, and then I can come in and do the other strike as well, adjusting the whole body to come in to do the strike. So that's what you're trying to develop when you do Wing Chun structure, is that you used to be able to keep your body upright, keep everything connected, keep everything relaxed, and be able to constantly adjust that force. Alright, good luck.